Hey guys, this is Dan Seifer from MobileBurn.com and what we've got looking at today is the brand new Samsung Infuse 4G coming out for AT&T. Um, this phone was just announced at an event um, in New York City by Samsung and AT&T, or just officially announced we should say, uh, and it's going to be hitting the market in a couple weeks. So we're going to do a quick rundown of uh, the box contents and then take a look at the hardware. Uh, so taking a look at the box, you can see it's just kind of your standard AT&T box. They didn't go out of their way to do any sort of uh, special packaging for it. Um, but it's just what you normally see on an AT&T shelf. Opening up, we've got a quick start guide right on the top there. Then there is the phone itself. It's a massive guy that we're going to take a look at in a moment. So let's get this powered on. I think they've pre-installed the battery for us. So there we go. Underneath that, we've got some more instruction manuals. Uh, there's a $25 credit for the Samsung Media Hub to download uh, content to the phone. Then you've got some instruction manuals in a couple different languages. Underneath there, we've got standard micro USB cable, and that will plug into the charging block here to charge the phone. Then we've got a stereo headset with a couple of different uh, earpieces for comfort. And this does have a switch for the send and end key, so you can use it as a hands-free device. And then this is kind of unique. You don't see this too often. Uh, this is an HDMI adapter that will plug into the micro USB port on the bottom of the phone, and then you can plug a mm, full-size HDMI cable in there so you can output content to a, an HDTV. And then we've got a small micro uh, SD adapter here for the included SD card. And that's it as far as accessories go. Taking a look at the phone itself, uh, one of the first things you're going to notice is the massive size of this screen. This is a 4.5 inch screen. It's one of the biggest screens we've seen on a handset and it's really getting into um, some some dangerous almost tablet like territory uh, almost like where the uh, Dell Streak 5 is. Let's just get this plastic out of the way there. There we go. Uh, it is one of Samsung's new uh, Super AMOLED screens. It's uh, 800 by 480 pixels of resolution very very bright and great colors as usual that we see from a su uh, super AMOLED screen really is the star of the show here definitely dominates most of the front of the, the phone itself but great viewing angles great colors as you can see down at the bottom you've got four capacitive touch screens or touch buttons excuse me you got uh, menu home back and search then up top, let's turn the screen off and maybe you'll be able to see better, there we go. Uh, you've got a 1.3 megapixel front facing camera, your earpiece, and then some proximity and light sensors. As with most uh, Samsung phones, this does not have any sort of uh, indicator light or notification light on it, unfortunately. But that's just the way it is. Taking a look at the side profile, you can see this is uh, extremely thin. It's 8. 8.99 millimeters at its thinnest and about 9.24 millimeters at its thickest down there at the bottom where the bump is. Um, Samsung and AT&T are claiming this is the thinnest 4G phone on the market uh, and it is very thin. Uh, the thinness helps uh, mitigate the large size of the device in your hand as well. As is per typical with Samsung, we've got a power sleep unlock button on the side there. Rotating the phone up top, we've got just a 3.5 millimeter headphone jack on top and over here we've got on the other side the volume up and down keys and nothing much else and on the bottom of the phone we've got the micro USB uh, port and that also doubles as the HDMI video out when you use the included adapter that we showed you next to that you've got the microphone port as well uh, taking a look at the back of the phone you can see it's a mostly flat back except for the bottom bump here which is uh, kind of a ridge that gives you a speaker there so uh, it doesn't sit flat when it's on a desk it does bump up a tad. Uh, up top you've got an 8 megapixel autofocus camera that's capable of recording HD video in 720p. Flash LED right there and then you've got the battery door which is kind of this whole piece back here. It's kind of flimsy as far as the battery door goes it's very thin 
very plasticky. You kind of have to pry it off and then push it back on. And make sure you snap it around like so. But uh, Samsung does give you instructions there on how to do that. Underneath we see the uh, battery itself. Uh, this is a 1750 milliamp hour battery, so it's a big unit in there. Then we've got the SIM card that's been pre-installed for us. And right under here you can see the micro SD slot, and we've got a 2 gigabyte micro SD card included. Uh, but the phone does support up to 32 gigabytes. Uh, internally it does have 16 gigabytes of storage, so it does give you a lot of room without having to expand the SD card itself. Now the Infuse 4G is very very light in the hand as well which helps uh, uh, allows you to adjust for the size of the device. Uh, it's only about 139 grams so it's very lightweight in your hand but as you can see it is huge. Comparing side by side with a 4.3 inch phone, this is the Droid Charge from Verizon which is a, another Samsung model that has a 4.3 inch Super AMOLED screen uh, and you can see the, the Infuse is definitely bigger. Let's wake these guys up. Um, the Infuse screen itself is much bigger and it's a little bit taller as well. However, the Infuse definitely has a beat in thinness, um, which is, is, is something to be said for sure. You can see the thinness of the Infuse there versus the, the Droid Charge, which also has that kind of ridge at the bottom. The only issue that we happen to have with the screen itself is because it's so big and it's still using that 800 by 480 pixel screen uh, resolution, things can get a bit grainier when compared side by side with uh, a smaller screen. This is being the 4.3 inch here on the left. Um, so as you can notice in a moment, once this guy is finished powering up, there we go. Uh, if you look really closely, you can kind of see, it might be hard to tell in the video, uh, a bit more graininess on the Infuse's screen versus the Charger screen. But nonetheless, you do have some great viewing angles, uh, same great uh, quality of color and vibrance that we're used to with the Super AMOLED Plus screens that we've seen. Um, but really, really impressive screen and the, definitely the star of the show when it comes to the hardware. So that's a quick rundown of the hardware of the Infuse 4G. Next we're going to take a look at what software we got. So taking a look at the software here on the uh, Infuse 4G from Samsung, what we've got running here is Android 2.2 Froyo. Uh, it does not have the latest version, uh, Android 2.3.3 that we've seen on the Samsung Galaxy S2. So uh, hopefully it will be got updated to that soon. As you can see here, it's got the Samsung TouchWiz interface loaded on top of it. Same TouchWiz that we've seen before, it's pretty much the same kind of build as on the Samsung Captivate, which is also on at and does not have the new uh, software that we've seen on the Samsung Galaxy S2, if you've seen our hands-on video of that, that has the latest version of TouchWiz, which is slightly different. Uh, but you still have things like pinch to zoom here, so you can see the uh, layout of your home screens and you can customize them quite easily. You've got your notification bar up top, has your uh, toggles up there, so you can toggle the Wi-Fi, the Bluetooth, the GPS, uh, rotation, and, and your uh, ringtone setting there. Taking a look at the widgets, you've got your standard uh, Samsung TouchWiz widgets. You've got buddies, calendar, days, um, very similar to what we've seen before, program monitor, so you can monitor what programs are, are open and running at the same time and then your social updates uh, widget there. So you can see over here on the left hand pane of the home screen we've set up the social widgets widget with a Facebook widget so you can pan through uh, different status updates from your Facebook friends and stuff. You can also add MySpace or Twitter to this if you desire. The contacts is your standard uh, Samsung TouchWiz contact page. And you can see here we've got what we've seen before from TouchWiz. You got a skinned uh, uh, contact thing with a couple gestures that you can easily call someone, or you can quickly send them a message in the text messaging uh, application. Then you can uh, 
organize them by groups, see your history, and you can also, uh, uh, if you were to add um, your Facebook and Twitter integration, you can see updates on there as well. The phone dialer is the Samsung TouchWiz dialer that we've seen before. Nothing really new there. Taking a look at the applications installed, uh, Samsung and AT&T have been pretty good. They didn't put too many applications on here, but they did install a few uh, by default. All share Samsung's DLNA uh, application that we've seen on many of their TouchWiz devices. Right next to that, you can see a special version of Angry Birds, uh, especially uh, for the Samsung Infuse. It's got a, a specific level that's not available to anyone else. Um, that comes pre-installed. AT&T Code Scanner is a QR code scanner. Family Mapping, so you can uh, access the AT&T Family Map Service. AT&T Navigator for navigation. Then we've got some standard uh, Android applications. Facebook is pre-installed by default. Limpack there is a benchmarking application that we installed, so that will not come by default. That is available in the market. Live TV is uh, uh, AT&T uh, TV service. Then we've got Samsung's Media Hub that we're used to seeing. Memos, Mini Diary for diary tracking and such. My at and for account management. Uh, news and weather is included as well. That's a standard Android application. Quadrant is something that we put on there as far as uh, for benchmarking there, and uh, that's not included normally. Then Quick Office is installed by default, of course. A couple more benchmarking applications. You've got your task manager, uh, and then uh, YP Mobile is an at and specific application. So they didn't do too bad. There's only a handful of pre-installed applications here. Um, not, to, not as many as we've seen from other carriers such as Verizon. As you can see here, the Infuse is very fast. It's easily paging through anything that we're doing here uh, without any hesitation or stutters. It's powered by a 1.2 gigahertz single core processor, uh, but it does have uh, the Power, G Power VR uh, 540 chipset, so it's uh, a lot of graphics muscle here that's helping to push things along, as you can tell. Uh, on our benchmarking scores, it did not score as high on the processor as many other uh, phones on the market today, but we are not noticing any sort of performance lag because of that, and that's likely due to the graphics processor inside. 